Good evening. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church on this Christmas Eve night. It is a joy to worship with all of you this evening. Tonight we will be partaking in Holy Communion, and at the United Methodist Church, we have an open table, which means that if you are in attendance tonight, you are welcome at the table. You are invited to the table. I will give further instructions about how we will be taking communion when we get to that part of the service. At the conclusion of the service tonight, if you purchase a poinsettia, you are invited to take it with you so that you might display it in your home for the rest of this Christmas season because tonight is not the last day of Christmas. It's the first day of Christmas. Yesterday was the last day of Advent, and well, this morning was the last day of Advent, and so we have officially entered the Christmas season. Most importantly, tonight I hope you know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. 
This year, we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of the doors open wide and the to cease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. So make room in your being to dream yet again. Of a world without fear and a God that draws near. For it's almost Christmas. Love is almost here. May we see, may we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship holy God. Let us worship holy God. I invite you now to stand as you're able as we sing together. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn number 240, and then we will remain standing and sing together, Angels We Have Heard on High. Yeah. 
remain standing as we affirm our faith. The affirmation of faith can be found on the screens and in the insert in your bulletin. We believe in hope. We believe that to hope is to dream with our eyes wide open. We believe in peace. We believe that peace is not found by accident. Prepare the way. We believe in joy. We believe that joy is a change of forces that gives from the backdrop, as well as soul food, big tables, open doors, candlelight, fireside, singing in the shower, and the body of Christ gathered as one. We believe in love. Therefore, we believe in the power of dreams. And we believe that nightmares, which are all too real here and now, will have no place in God's promised day. Until then, we believe in passing the light, in showing up, in doing the work, in listening for angel choruses, and in learning from the youngest among us. We believe. God, if we listen closely, we can almost hear the angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the inn keeper say, no room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisper, Follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. So as we turn to your word, holy writer, don't let us miss a thing. The smell of the hay, the cool of the air, the way Mary cherished this wild dream in her heart. We want to hear it all. We don't want to miss a thing. So today we pray, can you help us listen closely? Amen. Tonight's scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 2, first part verses 1 through 7. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no replace for them in the end. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. 
And you may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 217, Away in a Manger, and 234, O Come All Ye Faithful.
The remaining scripture comes again from Luke 2, finishing on with chapter, uh, excuse me, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about his child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. This night, this Christmas Eve night, we are those who dream. Throughout this season of Advent, we have been reminded that we are all dreamers. And as cliche as it is to use the phrase, the reason for the season, cliches are cliches because of the truth they do indeed speak. And in order to fully live into and understand this reason, we emphasize the celebration of the birth of Christ, the gift from God who loved the world so much. Spoken word artist Thomas Terry says in his poem, The Incarnation, what good is the Christmas story if it's void of God and his glory? What's the worth of the words peace on earth if it's not rooted in Christ's birth? What benefit is it for us in discussing the joy of the season unless we fix our hearts and minds on the reason? So on this Christmas Eve, we must be diligent to take time to pause, to question, to dream our way back to the manger, where divine power enters into the world. We can draw parallels between our current reality and the reality in which Christ was born into, the occupation of national powerhouses over those deemed less than, Jesus born homeless as we witness our neighbors rebuild their lives after the natural disaster. Jesus as a child perceived as a threat to political stability as we watch mothers sheltering their children in the Middle East. The beauty of the Christmas story is that yes, Christ is born for you. Christ is born for me. And Christ is born for those on the margins of society. Because we all hear the angels say, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all 
the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Christ comes in the midst of brokenness to provide hope for the world. Christ has come to deliver hope, peace, joy, and love to us. And because Christ dwells among us, we are renewed and changed people. Okay. <laughs> and isn't it a joy to explain that? <laughs> Reverend Nadia Bowles Weber, in one of her sermons, says, Christmas isn't itself about getting what you want or making sure you're giving others what they want. To experience Christmas is to trust that God can do this thing again. God can, be born, can again be born in me and you in this broken mess of a gorgeous world. God can again. Be born in me, in you, in this broken mess of a gorgeous world. We don't have to look far to see the broken mess around us. But the good news is that the broken mess is never closer to us than Christ. The world into which Christ was born those 2,000 years ago was a broken mess. The world Christ is born into in 2023 is a broken mess. And amid the brokenness, Christ invites us to his table. And as we break bread together this night, we remember the dreams God has for us and for the world. We remember that we are called to the hope, peace, joy, and love that has been exemplified in Emmanuel, God with us. We remember that the candle of hope throws its light with abandon, giving us sparks of hope as we keep awake to the coming of Christ. We remember that the candle of peace throws its light with abandon, giving us sparks of peace as we prepare the way for the Prince of Peace to dwell among us. We remember that the candle of joy throws its light with abandon, giving us sparks of joy that are sown as we get swept up in the immense joy that is happening around us. We remember that the candle of love throws its light with abandon so that we can see that we are not alone. God has sent God's Son to dwell among us. We remember that the light of Christ throws its light with abandon, being born again and again into this broken mess of a gorgeous world. To carry a dream by Reverend Sarah A. Speed. To carry a dream is to walk at night or to walk by light but with a pebble in your shoe. To carry a dream is to wake at night, to wake and blink twice in case you see something new. To carry a dream is to plant trees in old age, to be part of a church that is human and frayed. To carry a dream is foolish and wild. It's the faith of a child wishing on stars. But to carry a dream is also hopeful and wise. The faith of our elders saying God will provide. So may we walk until we see the light. May the pebble in our shoe remind us why we fight. May they say we are foolish and unwise. And may we continue to dream. May hope keep us alive. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 246, Joy to the World.
the ushers come forward, this evening we are taking up an offering for the Tennessee Disaster Relief Fund. The funds that we collect tonight will go to specifically to the Clarksville area that were that was affected by the tornadoes earlier this month. And as we continue to pray for those victims, we also offer this offering as a way that our prayers might become tangible. Let us pray. O oh God, bless these our gifts, that they might be used to begin to rebuild, that they may be used to remind those who are rebuilding that they are not alone. O oh God, you have graciously given us these our gifts, and we now humbly return them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> You may be seated.
as we come to our time of Holy Communion, we are reminded that this is not my table. This is not St. Bethlehem's table. This is not even the United Methodist Church's table. This is Christ's table. And Christ invites and welcomes each and every one of us. This evening we'll be taking communion by intinction. We will have two stations to, that, we'll, that we will be serving from. You're, you will receive the bread. You are then invited to dip it in the cup and take the elements together. The altar rail is open for you to pray as long as you would like. Any money that is left on the altar rail goes for a Helping Hands Fund, which goes to assist our neighbors in need. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest, and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh born of a woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. 
gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with the church, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Because there is one loaf, we who are many partake in the one loaf, for we are the body of Christ. The bread which we break is sharing in the body. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, I invite those assisting with communion to come forward. The table is set, and you are invited to come forward as you feel led.
Well, I forgot an important instruction during communion. If you didn't grab a candle, we will have Doyle and Josh bring them around. <laughs> There's another basket on this side. And if you have a child and you would like them to have an electric candle, we have those as well. That's what I have. I yes. have electric ones. So. so if you don't have a candle, just raise your hand and we will bring them around. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to the close of our service on this Christmas Eve, we will be sharing the light of Christ with one another as we sing together silent night. The words will be on the screens. They are also on the back of your bulletin so that you're not trying to fumble a candle and a hymnal at the same time. And so we will pass the light of Christ among us as we sing together. And we will gather around the outside so we will form a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can cut across pews if it needs to. We know that together we are the body of Christ. Let us sing. <laughs> 